Would you turn to Ezekiel chapter 12? In verse 21. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, what is this proverb that you people have about the land of Israel, which says, the days are prolonged. That means restrained. Everyone say restrained. restrained. Things that prolong are things that are restrained or delayed. And every vision, what? Fails. Tell them, therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will lay this proverb to rest. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, the days are at hand and the fulfillment of every what? Vision. Which is associated with prophecy and prophetic insight. For no more shall there be any false vision or flattering divination. That means familiar spirits. That brings false vision. Within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I speak, and the word which I speak will not come, will come to pass. It will no more be a postponed or restrained. For in your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word and perform it, says the Lord God. And I will what? Perform it. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, look, the house of Israel is saying the vision that he sees is for many days from now. And he prophesies of times far off. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, none of my words will be postponed or restrained anymore. Do you understand that God's talking about this now? In other words, what he's been speaking and saying, he said, it's, it's no more. There's going to be no more holdback. There'll be no more restraints. I'm manifesting my promises. But the word which I speak will be done, says the Lord. Again, to postpone is to restrain, hold back, delay. Cause to wait. As I was sitting with the Lord today, and he said to me, you know you have a personal trainer and I said a personal trainer and he says no a personal restrainer I said oh a personal you have a personal restrainer and he is the Holy Spirit he is your personal restrainer does everybody understand that and he is the one who trains us so that we can be restrained and not doing the things that we just blow off to do. In Ezekiel 36. I thought it was quite comical at first until he started bringing a little bit more revelation on this stuff. I thought, man, you're serious about this. Personal restrainer. Hmm. In Ezekiel 36, 23, let's speak it. He says, I will sanctify. See, sanctify is to be set apart. It's called restrain. You're being restrained to God. It's like being yoked with him. Ezekiel 36, 23. I will sanctify my great name which has been profaned among the nations which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord God when I am what? Hallowed, honored, feared in you before their eyes. In other words, when I change you and you reverence me. But there's something that's going to have to happen. He's saying... You know, in other words, when you change, you will be restrained. You'll be restraining because the, the, per, your personal restrainer will be teaching you and restraining you from the things of the old, from the things of evil. Amen? So that Christ can be formed in every area. Let's go a little further. Verse 24, and I will take you from among the nations. Everyone in this room is from another nation. Somewhere. Amen? 
Doesn't matter where you came from. Matters where you're going, though. And I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Well, this is where God's put us. Then I'll sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your idols. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you shall keep my judgments and do them. When he causes us, that is to restrain for purpose. A cause is to restrain for purpose. A cause is to what? Restrain for purpose. And I'm going to cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you will be my people and I'll be your God. And I will deliver you from all of your uncleanness. And I will call for the grain and multiply it. And bring no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase your fields. So that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Again, to cause is to restrain for purpose. The Spirit is the restrainer. He's your personal restrainer. To what? Hold us back from things that are harmful to us. Amen? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5, please. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and everybody knows it. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So when we are removed, all hell is going to break loose. And then the lawless one will be revealed. whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. So the personal restrainer, who is known as the mentor and the tutor, he uses those that restrain the flesh by cooperation so that we can restrain evil. In other words, you can't give what you don't have. And if you're not restraining your flesh, you can't restrain evil. Has everybody got it? That's what the word says. Submit to God to what? Resist the devil. Why are you submitting to God? Because you're submitting to him to come to a place where you are allowing the, your personal trainer, restrainer, to take hold and lead your life. No longer is it yours. It's his. He sends the Holy Spirit to you as a personal trainer, to restrain. Does everybody get this? Hallelujah. And without cooperation, you're a reactor, not a responder. Does everybody get it? If you're a reactor, that means the restraints aren't there. If you're a responder, you respond because the restraints are there holding back your flesh. See, there's a battle within you all the time. One, the flesh always wants to lead. Amen? But if you're led by the Spirit, the flesh is crucified. In other words, it's restrained. Amen? If it's crucified, it's restrained, isn't it? Hallelujah. Psalm 39, verse 1.
I said, I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle. Hallelujah. While the wicked are before me, because there's a lot of things I'd like to say to that person. I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good. I knew if I would have slipped out good, bad would have followed. <laughs> and my sorrow was stirred up. My heart was hot within me. Man, I was burning up. While I was musing this, while I was thinking about this, the fire burned, brought me heartburn. Then I spoke with my tongue. What did he do? Restrained his react and humbled himself and said, Lord, make me to know my end because I'm a real bonehead right now. I want to say all kinds of things and think all kinds of things. And what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am? Indeed, you have made my days as a hand breast, and my age is nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from myself, from my transgressions. And do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. What? The restrainer. <laughs> Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. When with, when with rebukes you correct man for iniquity, you made his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is vapor. The restrainer. He restrains our mouth. Our personal trainer as a restrainer. He will. Man, I'm telling you, and you've probably heard this testimony over and over and over, and I, I love to share it, but my wife and I are coming home one night. We were at a uh, people's house breaking bread, and uh, it was, I don't know, about 10 o'clock at night. It was dark out and everything, and we, we were coming back the country roads. That's when they, these roads weren't all built yet. <laughs> And they were dirt roads. And we came to a four-way stop sign, and I could not move. I was restrained, literally restrained. It was like somebody just held me there. I, could, I had my foot on the clutch. I could not move. I was paralyzed. And my wife turned and looked at me and says, why aren't you moving? I was trying to get to her until I can't move. And next thing we know, this vehicle ran the stop sign about 50, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> No stop, no nothing, man. Full blow. Bam. Then the hand lifted from me. Man, we just gave God all the glory. <laughs> but the restrainer held me. Literally held me. The Holy Spirit held me. And wouldn't let me do, get killed. It wasn't my time because it was on my side driver's side, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, if he can do that, he can do that in anything. He's just looking for cooperation. You know what I'm saying? Just you, the desire to want his presence, the desire to willing to do whatever it takes. He is the restrainer, man, let me tell you. <laughs> In John 16, in verse 1. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think he offers God service. Oh, we are at that time. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you all of them. These things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. 
But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where I'm going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the trainer, the restrainer will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Just think about how much Jesus restrained those apostles. <laughs> those guys kind of probably got rebuked every single day. I think he might have used, who told you that, you know? But he says, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Convict. Convict is the attempt to restrain. When there is conviction, it is an attempt to what? Restrain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them right now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, the trainer and restrainer has come, he will guide into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Again, to convict is to the attempt to restrain from the presence of evil. Restrain an individual from the influence. In Psalm 143. You know, think about this. Um, there are people that have personal trainers for physical things and other things. People get lessons for certain things. Amen? Amen. And, and, and in these trainers, if you don't cooperate and attend enough training sessions, you don't get it. You won't reach that goal. Amen? So when the Holy Spirit begins to restrain, it's because he's teaching us discipline also. Because discipline is a place of consistent, consistent. When you are disciplined, you're consistent. You're unmovable. Does everybody get it? You're unmovable. You are disciplined. You don't move by how you, how you feel. You're not going to be influenced by how you feel, what you see, and what you think. Your only influence is truth. And that's why the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So he is our mentor. He is our tutor. And I always tell people he's our nanny. He takes you to the throne room of God. He dresses you. When you were a baby, he changed your diapers. He took care of you. He fed you milk until you were able to take meat. And he's been there the whole time. He corrected us to restrain us. And then he got a little bit more aggressive as we got older. Because we got more aggressive. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> 143 verse 7. Answer me what? Speedily, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Cause me. What's cause to? Cause is to what? Restrain for a purpose. Cause is to what? Restrain for a purpose. Hallelujah. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, and you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. 
In other words, restrain me. In your mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my soul. For I am your servant. He was proclaiming his rightful position as one who cooperated because he says, I am your servant. And because if I am your servant, then I'm a cooperator with you. I am serving you. So let the restrainer, my personal restrainer, not only restrain me, but restrain my enemy. glory. Cause me, restrain me for your purpose. Hebrews 12, verse 5. Let's speak it. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons and daughters, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. That's that aggressive more, you know. No, no, no more conviction. Now there's chastening. You, you, you bypass the conviction and you got a little bit further and you, now you're being chastened. Do not be discouraged when you are rebuked by him for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son and daughter for whom he receives. If you endure chastening, correction, what's that? Correction to learn to restrain. Does everybody get it? Remember, he is the trainer. God deals with you as, as sons and daughters for what son is there whom the father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons and daughters. Furthermore, we've had hus uh, human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect, shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seem best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Does everybody get it? See, you must be trained by your chastening. Does everybody get that? In other words, when we were corrected, it's, it's an opportunity to learn because it's something we missed. Yeah. Miss conviction? Go into chastening. Amen? Chastening is training for restraining. Chastening is what? Training for restraining. And of course, it's, it's training for restraining the, the flesh. Chastening is training for restraining the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, if you're walking in the Spirit, are you restrained from the Are you restraining the flesh? Again, being led by the Spirit causes you causes crucified the flesh. So, if you're being led by the Spirit, your flesh is restrained. So, when you're walking in the Spirit, you cannot walk in the Spirit if your flesh is not restrained. It's impossible. You may have a form of godliness, but you ain't in the Spirit. It's totally different. Because there's fruits of the Spirit. Hello? There's not reactions. There's not outbursts. Look at verse, let's go on. Verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or desire. And he, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of sin and death. Now here's the works. Here's the fruits of the flesh, which are what? Adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath. It's called reactors. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and anything like it. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. 
So when you're walking in the Spirit, it's because you're restraining the old man. Does everybody get it? Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, control over self. Against such there is no laws. And those who are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another because we'll move you right out. These are fruits of the unrestrained, that darkness. The works of the flesh is unrestrained. Does everybody get it? If something is unrestrained, it's bound by darkness. Amen? Walking in the Spirit is caused by restraining the old man's fleshly influence. When you're walking in the Spirit, it is the anointing of God Almighty that restrains. It is the mantle of the anointing that will assist the restraints. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the trainer of, is the personal trainer, amen, of restraining. But God uses the anointing to restrain. Is everybody with me? Without the anointing, you can't restrain. The anointing of God is what restrains. That's why they threw the mantle on them. When the mantle touched them, man, those guys were restrained. Restrained to what? All works of the flesh. What does the Bible say? The anointing breaks the yoke of bondages. So you can be so spiritual and be bound. You can have all the fruits, supposedly, But if you're still responding to the will of the flesh, you begin to react. Then the restraints have been dismantled. Does everybody get this? That's the enemy's objective is to dismantle the restraints. That means pull us out of the anointing. That's why the Bible says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Make no place for the devil. Submit to God and resist the devil. All of those, the, all those areas is to warn us that the enemy will draw us right out of the anointing and there'll be no restraint of the flesh. And you'll hold bitterness, unforgiveness. All of these things you'll be holding. You'll still be looking at the past and not looking at the future. Is everybody okay? Acts 20, 22. Paul said something very powerful. He said in verse 22, And see, now I go bound. Everyone say bound. In the Spirit. In other words, he was yoked. He was restrained in the Spirit. Why? Because he was under the anointing. I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy in the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Paul knew he was getting closer to his end. But he wasn't afraid. The Holy Spirit told him ahead of time, look at man, these things are going to be happening. Now many times the Holy Spirit said, restrained him from going to an area. And when he didn't restrain him from going to an area, he warned him about the area. But he said, don't worry, I'm with you. Hallelujah. He went bound, he was restrained, he was yoked in the Spirit. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1.
But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. And from such people turn away. For this sort are those who creep into households and ministries and businesses and take captive. In other words, they bind them. Of gullible women and men and women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth or be free. Because when you come to the knowledge of truth, the truth will set you free. Does everybody get it? The truth will do what? Set you free. These were un unrestrained servants of darkness, and they have been taken captives of evil. They are bound. Go to 1 John chapter 2. I haven't met one Democrat that is restrained. They're all bound. Again, there's a difference between being bound and restrained, amen? <laughs> You're bound to the evil. You want to be bound to the spirit. That's restrained to the spirit, yoked with the spirit. But man, those guys just... Whew. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Little children is the what? Last. Is anybody there? Hallelujah. Little children, is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made what? Manifest. So were they restrained or unrestrained? Unrestrained. That none of them were of us. They were pretenders. Generic. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I've not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Wow. No lie is of the truth. Again, the anointing is the mantle of the restraining of the flesh. That is the restrainer, the restraining. Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? Die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. For if you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. So the restrainer, the trainer, amen, the personal restrainer for us is preparing us. And the area to be released is the sons and daughters of God. Kind of reminds me of a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly. Where are they restrained? They're restrained in the container until, phew. Hallelujah. Unrestrained individuals are captives of darkness. Second Timothy two, verse twenty one.
Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, that means yesterday also, he will be a vessel of what? Honor, sanctified, which means restrained, set apart, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Associations bring impartations. Be careful. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Let me repeat that. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Let me say that one more time. A servant of the Lord does not get in arguments. Hello. It's not disrespectful. But it's gentle. Able to teach, patient, humble, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. So when you are sanctified, it is a place of restraining. It's to be set apart. That's where God trains us in these areas. That's where the personal relationship comes forth. And this is where revelation comes. Proverbs 29. Revelation from God Almighty is a life-changing event. It changes your life. Does everybody get it? There's a difference between illumination, carnal revelation, knowledge of revelation, but when there's revelations from God Almighty, it's a life-changer. It's something that affects you. You changed. Does everybody get it? It's life changing to you. What it does is it gets you to a place where you're more sensitive of his reverence, of his holiness, of who he is. He's not just God. He's Father. He's respected. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. It's different. Revelation, this revelation, it is the revealing of the Creator and it's life changing. Proverbs 29 18. He says, Where there is no revelation, where there's no life changing moment, the people cast off what? Restraints because it's not there anymore. So everybody get it? But happy is he who keeps the law, the word. So they're restraining. There's no restraints. Remember, revelation is the revealing of the creator, which brings a life change. There's something that has happened to you, that he's revealed to you. you are, he is revealing something of himself to you. And when it happens, it's life-changing. Does everybody get this? Now, we can get revelation knowledge. Amen? Those are nuggets, I call them. They can be life-changing in assistance of a life change. But man, if Jesus showed up in your living room, you would change your life. Hello? If he shows up in your dream... You're going to change your life. That's revelation. It's when the Creator reveals something to you about Himself. Think of what happened with Peter. What did he say? He said, you are the Christ. Jesus said, who did they say that I am? Then he said, who do you say that I am? Peter was the only one that got revelation. Because the Father revealed something deep. What did he do? He revealed something that of the Creator. Jesus was the Christ of God. 
the creator of all things. You don't think Peter's life changed? Amen. Then the devil tried to get involved and Jesus wanted, and then Peter tried to save Jesus. Oh. <laughs> and Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. That was another revelation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember, the anointing is what restrains. It is the restraining. It's the object of restraint. It is a product of the restraint. The Holy Spirit is the trainer of the restraining. He trains me in you. He's your personal restrainer. Amen. He trains you to live according to God. He causes us. Listen, there's times when you know you need revelation. You got to have revelation. You got to get revelation knowledge. There's got to be a reconnect, a refresh. We get refreshed when we come in God's presence. Amen. But then there's got to be that personal event where the Creator is revealing something about Himself to you. I don't know what it is, but it could be anything. He can reveal something. There could be a glimpse of something about himself to you. Again, you can sit and talk with him and whatever and get revelation knowledge, just like today when he said to me, when he said, personal trainer, and I said, personal trainer? He said, no, personal restrainer. You have one. He's called the Holy Spirit. And he uses the product of the anointing to restrain. That's amazing the things that he does. But he's looking for everyone to come to him and ask, Lord, can you please release revelation to me? Reveal something to me about you. Amen? Grant me revelation knowledge. Heck, you don't know what's going to happen. But he wants to keep you refreshed and connected. And you know when you, you've been drifting from that revelation. Because you're your worst enemy. You're miserable. Hello? And you're thinking about every other way to be fulfilled. And there's no other way. <laughs> Oh, maybe I better read more of my Bible. Maybe I better do this. Maybe I better do that. Man, you need to just go, Lord, I need revelation before I kill somebody. <laughs> well, let me just be honest with him, you know. He's your dad. Please, come and sit with me. Do something with me. Man, take me somewhere. Visit me. Can we go off planet for a while? Let's go to another universe for a few minutes. Reveal yourself to me more. Amen? You have a personal restrainer. Let him train you. Praise God. Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your mercies and grace and faithfulness and for your love that's unconditional. Making it simple, not difficult. Making it simple. So we welcome our personal Restrainer, who is our trainer, the Holy Spirit, to come and restrain us, convict us, chasten us, kick us in the butt, do what you got to do. But we ask, Master, tonight, as a family, we come to you. As your children, we come to you and we ask, Lord, release revelation so the restraints will be strengthened and tightened up to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God.